Hey, how are you doing, guys? I'm Dohan. Here's lesson seven. So, in this lesson, we are going to cover GANs with super resolution. Then, we will go through the Siamese problem. And in the last part of the video, I will show you how to use audio with fast AI. So, let's get started with our lesson. We will start with groundbreaking advancement in the world of artificial intelligence, generative adversarial networks, or GANs. So, at the core of GANs lies a fascinating duality. On one side, we have the generator, which is an ingenious entity that crafts data resembling reality. On the other hand, we have the discriminator, which is a vigilant judge trained to differentiate the real from the fabricated. And this dynamic interplay sparks a learning process that propels the generator to create ever more convincing outputs and the discriminator to sharpen its discernment. So in our case, we will build a crappy fire to make images worse, and the critic will try to determine which is fake and which is original. This helps us achieve the super resolution. So the generator and gun for super resolution is responsible for creating high resolution images from low resolution inputs. In this scenario, the low resolution images act as the input to the generator and the generator rule is to take this low resolution images and generate corresponding high resolution versions. And for the discriminator is responsible for distinguishing between high resolution images and high resolution images generated by the generator. We will start by installing FastAI and importing the libraries that we will use, which is version and GAN. And first, let's make some crappified data. So we will build a function that will go through and crappify some data. First, we define resize two functions that takes an input image, its target size, and optional flag use man to determine whether to use the minimum or maximum dimension of the image for resizing. Then the function calculates the new dimensions of the image after resizing and return them as a table of width and height. The Crabifier class is designed to create lower resolution versions of images with added random text. So the constructor of that class takes two passes as an argument, pass LR, which is the pass where the lower resolution images will be saved, and pass HR, which is the pass of the original high resolution images. And this method here is used to generate a lower resolution version of an image and add text to it by generating a random integer queue between 10 and 70, which will be used as a text to be added to the image. Then it uses image draw to add the random integer as a text at a random position within the top left half of the image with a white color. And now let's get some data to work with. So we will use bits dataset. And here we grab it by using enter data method. And as we saw, our Cabify class needs two folders to pass in. So here we make two folders, one for low resolution and the second one for high resolution. And here we get our image files. Then we apply the Crabifier class in parallel to a list of our images for generating lower resolution versions of images with added text. And here we get a list of raw resolution images that we generated. And now let's take a look at our original images and the generated ones. So here we use PIL image to create on the first image on our uh, original data. And we call it again for the first image in the raw resolution images. Then we show them, and as you can see, here's the original image, and here's the raw resolution one, and our goal is to remove this number. Now let's take a look at the data block. For today's lesson, we will go back to the progressive resizing techniques that we talked about. 
So we want a function that can accept a batch size for the data loaders and the desired size, which is width and height, to which the images will be resized. So as you can see here, our blocks are going to be image block to image block, where our Ys is going to be higher resolution images and our inputs is going to be the lower resolution images. And then the number of classes here or DLS.C here is going to be 3. This is specify three channel images. And the goal of this model will be to generate our super resolution images or to make an image look better. So let's grab some data loaders. And here's a batch of our images. Here we initialize our hyperparameters, so the width decay is set to be equal to 10 to the power negative 3, and our y range is a tuple of negative 3 and 3. Then we initialize an instance of the mean squared error loss function, which will be used to compute the loss for the generator during the training. And the generator itself is going to be a unit, and for the backbone we will use a ResNet 34 architecture. Then we define our create learner function. And now let's just train our generator for two epochs and here is the results. Then let's unfreeze it and train it for three epochs. And here is our results. So this is the input image, the target image. And here is a predicted image. And as you can see, our model has successfully taken off the text from the image. Then we save our model. Now we need this generated images saved away so we can use them for our critic model. So this function here is going to save the generated images. Then we want to get rid of any augmentation of our training data loader, remove its shuffle and the drop blast. So we can do this by using train.new, which grabs the training data loader and generates a new unshuffled version that has this after batch uh, transforms added to it. So here we generate predictions from a train model using the data loaders that we defined above. And if we take a look at what each prediction is, it's a three-channel image. And here we call decode, and decode expects a tuple uh, to pass in. So here we pass in one prediction, and this none here means that we set it alone as a batch. And now we can convert to a non-p image and transpose the dimensions to get back the three channels that Perlo or Matplotlib expecting. And now we can show our generated image. So now we have our generated images done. So we can save them all away. Now we have the basic setup to run our classification. Uh, is it the generated image or it's not, which is the discriminator works. So we want to create a critic loader. And we have to do this because we have a bug with our image files. And here we generate the critic data loader. So first we split with random splatter, then we make a data set from our file names, which is our generated images and the original images. And then we define our item transforms and GPU transforms. And here we build our data loaders. Then we show a batch of our data. And for the last function, we will use PCE with Logist Plus. And here we define our create crit learner, pass it the data loaders, the GAN critic, which is a special class in Past AI, the matrices that will be uh, passed, the loss function. 
And now we can fit our critic model with six epochs. And now we have all the pieces, the generator and the discriminator, so we can combine them into what is GAN. So here we get the critic data loaders again. Then we create the critic learner and the generator learner. And what will happen is they will be playing against each other as I told you and we are going to train the discriminator as many times as it's needed until it starts doing pretty good. And once it starts doing good, then we are going to try and make the generated images a little bit harder and then we will repeat this process. And this class here handles adjusting the learning rate for the discriminator during the training of GAN. So the constructor here initializes the callback with an optional parameter uh, multiply learning rate, which determines the factor by which the learning rate is multiplied for the discriminator, and the default value is 5. And this function here is executed as the beginning of each batch during the training, so it checks if the network in critic mode, which is training the discriminator, and if it is indeed training, um, if both conditions are met, it multiplies the current learning rate with this parameter. And this method here is executed after each batch, so if the network isn't in the generator mode and the batch is completed, so it's going to restore the original learning rate by dividing it with this parameter. Then we create an instance of adaptive GAN switcher class. So this class implements a strategy to dynamically switch between the training the generator and the discriminator in GAN based on a specified threshold, which is here as 0.65. Now we can generate our GAN learner, so here we pass it our two learners, some weights that we want to use, whether or not we want to show the images every time we want to do a batch, our switcher, the optimizers, along with the callbacks that we want to use. Now we can go ahead and fit 14 epochs. And here's the results. So that's it for this notebook. And let's go with the second notebook. Now let's go with the Siamese. So the Siamese network is a unique architecture often used for tasks like image similarity or verification. So imagine you're training a model to determine if two images are of the same person's face or not. So the Siamese network is designed to excel in such tasks. And now let's think of the problem. I own three dogs and I want to differentiate between the three of them from a photo, but I only have five images of each animal. By our normal standards, we would say that's far too little of data for us to work with. But in this case, we have now 120 training samples, not including the augmentation. So we are going to build this example from Pets dataset, and we are going to use a low-level API. And here we import the vision library. Then we grab our data and get the images. First, let's make a transform called resized image that takes in the path and some size. Then we'll open the image and resize it. And here we grab two random images, image one and image two. And now we need some way of viewing our image along with a title. Here we define title image class to enhance the display and the visualization of an image along with its associated title or label. So the class has a custom method show that's intended to display the titled image. 
So here we can pass in uh, the first image along with some title like test and we call show and now we have a titled image. Now let's use this idea to make a pair of our images, something similar to uh, what we want Siamese to expect. So all we do is call the show image and we are going to concatenate two images together and have some title. So if the images are the same, the title will be true. If not, it will be false. And here we test it. So the first call here, we pass it uh, the same images. So the title is true. And for the second call, we pass it two different images. So the title is false. Now we need some transform to generate our Siamese dataset. We will want it to take a list of items and the labels. And for that, we want the Siamese pair transform. This class is a custom transformation in FastAI designed for generating data pairs for Siamese network training. And if we take a look at encodes method here, it generates a pair of images for Siamese training. It takes an index i as an input and returning a table containing uh, the ith image and another image chosen at random which could be from the same class as the ith image or different class and a binary label true or false indicating whether the two images belong to the same class or not now let's take a look at what exactly that looks like So we can go ahead and generate some labeler, something to extract the labels from the dataset, and we can map everything to our labeler. So here we look at the first five labels we have, and the length of them is 7390. And now we can generate our Siamese pairs dataset. So this is our labels and here is the indices uh, that belongs to this labels. As you can see here we have 200 images for each class. And here is our labels. Now let's transform all of this into a data loader. The first thing that we want to do is remember the resized image function that we saw. We want to make it into a transform. By doing this, we give it the ability to have an encode. So here we wrap it into a transform and call it open and resize. And now we have all the pieces, so let's build the pipeline. If we take a look at the first item from this pipeline, we have our batch, we have two input images, and whether or not they are the same. And now let's see how we take it from this pipeline and move it over to this data loader that we are expecting our model to use. First, we need to create a transform list. So we pass it the list of indices and the pipeline. And now we can build our data loader and add any sort of after batch and after item transforms. So in this case, we want to normalize our data. And here we get one batch of the data. Now let's take a look at the very simple way to show our images. So here we grab the two images and the label and store them into A, P, and C variables. So as you can see here, the label is one, which is means the two images are different. So let's take a look at them. So here we import transforms from Torch version and transform them to PIL image. And here's our two images. Now we have a data loader ready for Siamese networks, so you can go and play with it. And now let's go with the final notebook. And 
This notebook, we will explore how FastAI empowers us to unlock potential hidden within audio data. We will embark on an adventure that takes us from raw audio waveframes to meaningful insights and applications. So we will use FastAI audio module. And what makes audio different? It's possible to train on raw audio so we can simply pass in 1D tensor of the signal. And what is done now is to convert the audio to what is called a spectrogram to train on. So we will start with something that looks like this sort of, uh, of wave image and turn it into this pattern here. And now let's install our fast AI audio first. And for today's example, we are going to use what is called free digit dataset, which is the audio version of Eminist. It contains 2000 recordings from 10 speakers saying each digit five times. And here we download and extract the dataset from a URL. And this part of the code here specifies the function used to extract the downloaded dataset. In this case, it's uh, using the tar extract at a file name, which is extract the contents of the downloaded tar archive to a dictionary with the same name as the archive's file name. Now we want to grab just the audio files so we can call get files and pass it the predetermined audio extensions and now we have a list of file audio names and we can convert any audio file to a tensor with the audio tensor so here we try uh, to open the first file so we pass it to the audio tensor that create and now let's take a look to this audio tensor so as you can see here we have one by 58 and 240 And this is what our input data is going to look like. Now let's start our data set. So FastAI Audio has a audio configuration class which allows us to prepare different settings for our data set. Currently it has basic ML uh, spectrogram, basic MFCC, basic spectrogram and voice. And we will be using the voice module today as this data set just contains human voices. Here we are going to create a configuration object named CFG for our audio processing task. And our configuration will limit options like uh, frequency range and sampling rate. We can then make a transform uh, from this configuration to turn the raw audio into a workable spectrogram. So here we create audio to spectrogram transform that converts the raw audio into a spectrogram representations using the configuration settings specified by CFG variable. Then we crop the original uh, audio file to one second and then we pull the pipeline. Now let's just try visualizing what our newly made data becomes. So first we will remove the cropping. And as you can see here in the images, we have different, um, different ranges in our x-axis. So the first image here to start with 0.5 and the second image start with 0.6. This for our data without cropping. And with cropping, we have the same ranges for all of our images. Now we understand what the lower level pieces are doing, let's try and put them together. We will want to use the same transforms that you use in the pipeline and an appropriate getter and appropriate labeler. So for our item transforms, we are going to use the crop signal and audio to spectrogram again. And for our problem, the file names are labeled by the number followed by the name of the individual. So our get y function is going to be a lambda function that grabs the name of the file and its first position. And now we can build our data block where our input is audio block and our output is category block. Then we build our data loaders and here's a batch of our data. Since we have one channel images, we want to adjust our learner to accept one channel input and that's similar to what we did for Kaggle computation in the previous video. So here we define a function called alter learner uh, and we pass it the learner and the number of channels. 
then it goes ahead and adjusts the learner model to accept one channel image and here we define our learner pass it the data loaders and we are going to use xresent19 then we pass it the cross entropy loss flat function and we are going to use the accuracy metric then we need to grab the number of channels so as you can see here we have one and now we can pass our learner and the number of channels to alter learner method that we define to adjust our learner and now we can find our learning rate and fit and as you can see here the accuracy is 99% and now we can improve it more using the augmentation so let's take a look at the augmentation that's available to us so we can use the spectrogram transform class to prepare some transforms for us so if we go back to uh, audio to spectrogram settings we can see that we have all of these different options that we can use so let's go ahead and narrow this down a bit and for transforms we have these options so first we have remove silence so that locks where the silence in the audio then um, it remove it then we have crop signal which is crops a signal by duration and adds padding if needed then we have audio to spectrogram, mask time, and mask frequency. Let's look at the padding that used in crop segment. So there are three different types. First, we have dot zero, which is the default one, which is randomly both zeros before and after. Then we have dot repeat, which is repeat the signal until proper length. And lastly, we have dot zeros after which is uh, just bad with zeros until you get the specified length. Now let's rebuild the data block with these new transforms. So as you can see here, we have remove silence, resize signal, audio to spectrogram, mask time, and mask frequency. Then we define our data block and our data loaders. As you can see here, our data loader looks different. And now let's train so in order to make everything runs a little bit faster so we can create this audio learner function where we can pass in the data loaders the architecture the loss function and the metric and here we build our learner then we find the learning rate and path and as you can see here the accuracy becomes 100 percent and that's great Now let's take a look at the other options. So MFCC is a linear cosine transform of a power spectrum on nonlinear mill scale of frequency. Basically it takes a whole bunch of waves and try to fit it linearly. So here we set some default values to audio to MFCC. And here we adjust our item transforms. And instead of rebuilding the data block every time, we can simply override the item transforms with our new ones. Then we build our data loaders, and as you can see here, the images looks different. And here's our learner, then we find the learning rate. And then we fit, and as you can see here, the accuracy is 98%. And the last transform we will discuss is a delta transform, which is a local estimate of the derivative of the input data along with the selected axis. So this allows us to generate multiple channels out of one single channel. As you can see here, we have the channel 0, 1, and 2. So our input is a three-channel image. And if we go ahead and build our learner and fit for some epochs, as you can see, we have 99%. So we have covered a lot of topics today, so that's it for today's video, hope you enjoy it.